everyone. My name is Amber. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Amber Reads Romance. Today I am starting my vlog for the second book in the Bridgerton series. I am probably one of the only people who has not read this. Um, I haven't watched the show either, um, so I really knew nothing going in, just knowing that it was super hyped, but I had never read any of the Bridgertons. So I thought it'd be kind of a fun idea to do a vlog for each book. I don't know if I'll do vlog each time or just individual reviews. Honestly, I already started the book today at work. I listened to it on audiobook, um, and I'm about halfway through already. So I'm just going to kind of go over what I think so far. Um, I'm going to try to remember to link the video that I did for the first book down below. Um, warning, I did not enjoy it. I enjoyed the writing. Um, I enjoyed it like halfway through, but the big thing that happens with our heroine, like her choice, really pissed me off. So if you're interested in hearing me rant, um, you can definitely check that video out. Um, oh, there's my cat. He always comes when I film out here. Anyways, you might hear him meowing in the background. So I am reading The Viscount Who Loved Me. Um, it's the second book. This is between um, Antony and Kate. And Antony is the oldest brother of the Bridgertons. Um, and he's kind of been a rake and a cat and like, you know, has multiple mistresses and all that kind of stuff. And he decides that he wants to get married this year. And he kind of asks his family, like, hey, who's, like, like the best one of the season? And they bring up, I can't remember her name, but it's Kate's sister. And so he's like, okay, I'm going to pursue her. Well, Kate is not having any of that. She's the older sister. I think she's, like, 21, 22. Like, but at that time, that was considered almost like spinster. So she does not want her sister pursued by this rake and it's kind of like an enemies to lovers um a lot of great banter of her not wanting um Antony to try and pursue her sister her sister is really sweet and she actually had previously announced kind of to everybody that her sister is gonna have to approve her match so, um, Kate and him kind of start off on a rough foot. She is telling him, there's no way my sister's going to marry you. Um, she's not going to be with like somebody that's a rake and a player and has like no redeeming qualities. And Anthony, I really liked him in the first book, even though he kind of went crazy with all the stuff that went down. Um, cause his best friend was caught in a compromising position with his sister and he was not okay with it because his friend was a rake too. Um, so it was kind of hypocritical because he's a huge rake. So um, I'm liking his character in this because in the, um, in the prologue, you kind of learn about what happened, how his father died um, and it really affected him. And he's worried, he's like, kind of doesn't think he's gonna live as long as his dad lived. And I think he was 18 when he died, right about to go to Oxford for school. And so it just really affected him. His dad actually died from a bee sting. So it, <laughs> which comes into play later. So he ends up kind of pursuing, there's a lot of like antics and funny little stuff going on between them. Um, they have great banter and all this going on. Um, I also think they just have a great chemistry, even though they're kind of like hate each other right now. Um, I think that they have like a great chemistry. He, he like hasn't, doesn't even care about the sister. He's just like, I need a wife. Oh, well, like she's good and she's good as any. Um, and then this book does something that I really love in historical romances. And it actually has it where it's like the house party where they have to go stay at like the Bridgerton's house and there's a bunch of different people there and it's like the multi-day party where they play games and hang out. And I don't know why, but I just always love that in historical romance. So now we have them kind of in this forced proximity situation and Kate starts to see a different side of Antony because she runs into this girl, I think, God, I'm sorry, I think her name is Penelope. I might be wrong. 
but she was like a curvier girl. She was previously bigger, like she lost some weight and she was totally getting bullied by this mean girl, kind of the bell of the ball bitch. And um, Anthony basically like interrupts that and like escorts her into dinner, which usually it's like the higher up person that he would do. And so it was like Kate was just in awe of that and actually like loved it. So she started to look at him differently there. They start to have like really good conversations. She ends up not being able to sleep one night and going to the library. And then she kind of has a panic attack because there's this big uh, storm with lightning and all of that. And she's like having a panic attack. I think it's kind of over dramatic. It's a storm, but. Um, and he finds her and he helps her through her panic attack and is really sweet and kind. And so she's got totally different view of him. She even like apologizes to him and lets him know like, cause she's kind of like, wants to let him know that she's not going to stand in his way and that he can pursue her sister, but she kind of wants him for herself, but she knows there's no way like he would be interested in her that they could ever be together. So she just kind of lets him know that. And, um, (laughs) they're out in this garden together and she ends up getting stung by a bee. Um, he's like freaking out because the bee's flying around her and he's so worried. Um, so she's like, it's just a bee. He's freaking out. He's grabbing onto her. Um, and the bee ends up stinging her in this like altercation because he wouldn't let her go. And he's freaking out. Like he's thinking of his father and he's like, I got to suck the venom out, which is my dad's a beekeeper. You don't really do that with bee stings and she's just like what are you doing because she gets stung like kind of higher up on her chest so it's not her boob but it's like around there and he's like trying to suck out like venom it's not a snake um and then of course they get caught in this compromising position by like one of the biggest like gossip older ladies and so he kind of just says okay I'll marry her And she doesn't want him to marry her because he's pressured to and all of that. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, I really love their conversations. They've had good conversations about like deeper stuff, like about his father, about her mother dying. She has like a stepmother that really loves her like her own. And so I really like that in this book. They have great banter, but also like a lot of deeper connections. So you're seeing them kind of learn about each other and you know, he's attracted to her, but didn't want to be attracted to her. So I'm really liking this one so far. Um, I think it's a lot better than the last one, but I like the last one until after 50%. So let's hope that the last half of this book keeps up. And then I got to say, I still love the Bridgerton's mom. Like she's one of my favorite characters. She was kind of like almost pushing him towards Kate because I think she could see that he was more into her than the sister from the start. So I just love her. And I think it's so badass. She like raised all her kids. I think they had like eight kids um, without the father. So I will check back in with you probably when I finish the book. So hopefully this won't be too long of a vlog because I'm just doing it on this one book. Um, But I am hopeful that this will be better because I did rate the last book, I think like two stars. So I will follow up with you um, once I finish. Hey guys, so I am doing my final thoughts on The Viscount Who Loved Me. I did end up finishing it today while I was at work. And while I did enjoy it, I wasn't blown away by any means. Um, I did appreciate the characters a lot more. I liked it a lot more than the first book because the heroine in that book really was ruined for me. Um, But I really did like these characters. I felt their connection. They had amazing banter. Um, You know, they start to like really have deeper connection and conversations. So you kind of believe that they are falling for each other. My main issue was with Antony and like him not wanting to be in love and refusing and like just denying that he's in love with her and, and his reason for doing it. I mean, Julia Quinn did do like a note at the end about that this is a common thing for men. Um, But I still found it to be really stupid. That's just my view. I kind of thought it was ridiculous. Like you're going to not be in love. 
because your father died at a young age and so he was a better man than you so you're not going to live past that, that age or something like that i don't know i just kind of checked out with his reasoning and i kind of felt it was weak like weak for it to be the main conflict here but I did enjoy everything else. Um, like he even tells her like when they they get caught in that compromising position or what people think is a compromising position, um, he agrees to like, yeah, I'm going to marry her. He kind of jumps at that really fast and doesn't feel bad about it at all. So like that should have been the first clue. Like he was really into her. He was like having sexual fantasies and thinking about her while he was trying to like woo her sister. So it's like he was into her from the get go. Um, they had amazing banner and I really liked their dynamic. Um, and But like before they got married, he literally has a sit down conversation with her about how he will be loyal to her. He'll, you know, always, once if they have a sexual relationship, he won't cheat on her, all this kind of stuff. But he says, but I will not love you. We cannot have love in this relationship. And she's kind of, like, devastated because she's already falling in love with him. And then he, like, continues to make out with her and expose her breasts and get all up in there. But, like, oh, I don't love you. Anyways. So the love thing kind of drew this on for me where he was continuously fighting it. I did love their first sex scene. I thought it was really sweet. I loved how he was telling her how beautiful she was and she freaked out because she's always compared to her sister and seen as like the awkward or not beautiful, as beautiful as her sister. And so him saying how beautiful she was, she didn't think he was imagining her. He like, she like asked him who he's thinking about. And if it was her sister. And he lays down the law. He like grabs her cheeks. And he tells her like I don't know. I don't know what I have to say to you. I am so attracted to you. I've been envisioning you this whole time. Like I'm, I'm into you. Like I'm so into you. And people don't think she's beautiful. They're idiots kind of thing. And so I really loved that scene. Um, it was amazing to see her finally acknowledge that like. He does love her, not love her, but he does, he is attracted to her and wants her. So I really like these characters. The heroine was a much more likable in this book. Um, so I ended up giving this four stars, which is a lot better than the first one, which got two. So I am interested to continue this series. Um, I'm continuing to love his mom and like how she kind of like knew that he was more interested in her than the sister. She takes her out shopping. I love the Bridgerton mom. So I really did enjoy it. I just don't know if this series is like worth the hype because the first book I wouldn't have continued if I wasn't doing this like series here, this blog. Um, but I don't know, like, I think that Lisa Kleypas, like the Wallflower series, that should be like made into a series, a, a TV show to me. I mean, that one is like perfection. Um, so I don't know, like, I find Lisa Kleypas to be a million times better, but I've only read two of the books. So I could be wrong. Don't come after me because I know a lot of people love the Bridgertons. So we'll see if like I start to like this series a little bit more as we go on. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you can, please remember to like and subscribe. And I will see you on the next one. Probably the next Bridgerton <laughs> one. And we'll hope that it's a five star this time. All right. Thanks. I'll see you.